the world around us is so full of experiences of sight and sound and smell and taste and, and texture that it behooves us to pay attention to find the Creator at work in them. Senses have this very unique way of helping us um, attend to the present moment. What I love about that is that, as I understand it, it's the only place we can experience God is in the present. Uh, what we're doing is, is not introducing anything that is at all new, but re-inviting people to participate anew in learning through our bodies. But there have been moments throughout church history when some people seemed to really hone in on this idea that our body and our senses, as, as uh, Brent would often put it, are carriers of spiritual truth. Celtic Christians really were in touch with the natural world around them through their senses. They often called the natural world God's big book, or God's second book. And so they saw nature and life just brimming with who uh, the nature of God, who God is, and they were very in touch with that through their senses.
Monday morning, uh, I received uh, word that uh, Tom Lake uh, had called and said, Bill, I'd like to drop by this afternoon, and uh, could you find 15 minutes when we could talk? Well, when Tom Lake called, you always found 15 minutes to talk. And I want to thank first the Lake family uh, for being a family who gives. Uh, I, I just so give thanks for this experience, to be here. And then secondly, I want to thank the staff and the pastors uh, for being people who gave. It feels so good to be back here in Indianapolis, and I just thank you, Lewis and Bev and everybody, Ina, for having us back here. When you come to Second as a Lake Fellow, uh, you really get the chance to uh, see what is possible in the church. You get to see the extent of what's possible. Uh, so you come here and it, you have everything at your fingertips to be able to do ministry that people can't even imagine until they're in this place. Uh, but the reason for that is because the people here are so willing to serve. Dr. Beecher? What is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> and it was here, it was here, that I actually determined in my mind that the most of the things that I wanted to preach about were preaching about the New Testament, the Jesus Christ that was sent down here from God for us. And I still remember driving down the hill and up and seeing this great cathedral for the first time and I was overwhelmed with awe because here I was I don't think I'd even turned 30 yet or maybe I was 30 and just turned 31 and then when I established the Beecher connection I thought well this must be a sign this is good so uh, I started off and my first sermon was lousy I'm sure and afterwards the soprano soloist came up Helen Crandall do you remember her any of you <laughs> She said to me, oh, Bill, you have marvelous breath control. 
<laughs> and uh, many of you will remember Marge Murray. And Marge spent her winters in Florida, so she had arranged that I would uh, live in, uh, be in her home for the first several weeks, was just off of Spring Mill Road. And I stopped by the church, picked up the key to her house, and um, I drove up Spring Spring Mill and found the street and turned right. And uh, she had one of these, uh, uh, you had to go down a drive that was like a hill and pull around in the back, and there was the garage. So I uh, pulled my car around, and I started walking up the hill. And there were three of the angriest men looking me in the face that I think I had ever seen in my life. <laughs> And the first thing they said is, and who are you? What are you doing here? And I said, well, uh, I'm a Bill Enright. I'm the new pastor. If you see that church over there? Second person. No, who are you? <laughs> well, make long story short, there had been an armed robbery in that home the week before, and uh, they were on a neighborhood watch. So I guess I must have looked like a... Uh, 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 <laughs> anyway... That's the beginning of the end. 